I wish you uh, could all see the backdrop that I'm looking at the window and we do look like we're wearing a snow globe and all. Uh, Y'all just can't wait for this sermon, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Waiting on the day and breath for this sermon, I'll tell you. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, you're with us in so many special ways every moment of our life. Sometimes we're too busy, Lord, to even look and see a glimpse of your glory. But in this time, we hear your words. We ponder them in our hearts. And we ask that all that is shared, all our thoughts and our words will be acceptable to you. And the joy that we have will be contagious to the world. And we pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Come tomorrow morning. I'm going to give you your homework assignment now. Okay? Instead of at the end of the sermon. I want you to tell somebody that I saw the light of glory. Okay? Now, in order to do that, you've got to see the light of glory, right? So that's my job. Okay? i gotta, I got to pull this light of glory out. But I want you to be able to share with someone. There will be an opportunity sometime this week when somebody will look at you and say, how come you're so happy? How come you're doing this and helping helping with this thing. I mean, everybody else is so busy and you take time. How come it is that you sent me a card and how? Oh, and you're going to say to them what? Because I saw the light of glory this week. I saw it in the words of the scriptures. I saw it in the faces of the congregation, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And when I close my eyes and I look around and I think but review what has happened in my life, I see God in so many ways. And so I'm excited. I'm excited no matter what happens this week. Because when you read and see the glimpses of God's glory every time we gather together, it, it fills us with a love and with, a, with a, a purpose for life. And the world doesn't understand this. The world, the, those that are lost and lonely and, and despairing and just upset about things in general. They don't understand how somebody can be happy when things are not always going so well. Or how someone can be faithful even when they're, when they're not feeling well, but they'll still find some reserve that they didn't seem to have for a difficult crisis. It will be noticeable from our witness to others. That people will see that there's something going on in our life. The psalmist today, I love Psalm, uh, Psalm 50 because it's like, what God saying, so what, what do you think you can do for me? What do you think you can do for me? I mean, do you think that you can, you can give me something that would be impressive or something that I don't already need? Do you, do you really believe that all your sacrifices and all your things, you know, uh, really are going to make a big difference? Because I already, you know, I'm God. I mean, I made the whole place. I, I mean, it's mine. But God does say, uh, he says a warning to the, to the wicked. He says, if you read, this, read my words and then put them aside, just shove them aside, don't expect your life to have any meaning. Don't expect me to rejoice in your life when you just put aside, you, you read the words, you, you, you speak them out loud, and then you put them aside. It's at the very end, it says, but what I really need, what I really need is, is for you to learn how to offer thanksgiving. I just, I, when you offer thanksgiving, you honor me. And when you do this, it causes you to walk a different way. It causes you to live a different way. And you live closer and closer to my way. And because you do that, you will see the salvation of God. The whole message from all the scriptures today are the fact that we as Christians can see 
what the world is blinded to. And at times we've been part of that blindness where we cannot see the glory of God. We cannot see the joy of God or the love of God in a situation. But as we offer to God the only thing that we can, and that's our hearts of thanksgiving every day in every way, that God sees our hearts and blesses us and why does God bless us? So that we can be what? See, have y'all got this down now? We're blessed to be what? You got it. That's the covenant. God is our God and we are his people. And he's going to bless us so that we can be a blessing. Now I remember too, but some, to, some of these blessings don't seem like blessings at the time. It's only in retrospect that we realize that some of God's blessings do not come easy. Some of God's blessings don't even seem like blessings at the time. But in the long road of the journey of life, God's blessings are sure and perfect. They enable us to be stronger than we are alone. And so we offer our thanksgiving so that we honor God. We walk in a way that is Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. And because of that, we can see the salvation of God. We can see it happening all around us. Now, for those of you that are not part of the, the really technical age of mass communication and everything else, I'll just use a simple word of glimpse. Okay? I mean, that's a nice, old-fashioned homey kind of word, glimpse. It's just, it's just really a little snapshot of something we notice along the way. Maybe at the corner of our eye, maybe across the room, we just get a, a momentary vision and we see something. It's a glimpse. We, we don't fully grasp what it is, but it's just a glimpse. Now, for those of you that are uh, I heard the paper. For those of you that are in danger of being throttled, you heard that term now? Throttled? That's where people who can't get enough of the internet are getting so gobbling up so much that the company is saying, we got to slow you up a little bit. Okay? I'm talking you know, these terms that I didn't know until a few years ago. Giga. Gigabyte. I mean, I was just concerned about getting bit, period. You know, but now I can get bit and bit and bit, bit all over the place. But for that generation that understands what the gigabytes and the terabytes and the, I mean, I was afraid of things already and that was called about terabytes. You know, I mean, it's just getting out of hand. But y'all do know this little word called thumbnail. Thumbnail. Now, what's a thumbnail on a computer, on a computer screen? It's just a little picture. Not much bigger than your thumb. It's the computer age's version of a glimpse. It's a glimpse of something important. Whether it's a person's picture, a face, or something. And until you can't really appreciate these thumbnails until you do what? What do you have to do? Come on, use the words, use the word, enlarge, okay? You've got to make them big. And especially uh, since most of us do not have microscopic vision. To do. But you open up some of these thumbnail pictures, these glimpses, and see the richness of what somebody's trying to communicate. So every glimpse we have of God, every, every time... We see, and oh, y'all do have a good background. Y'all got a snowball back here, too. Okay. Not to worry, folks, we're going to get home by tomorrow, Okay. Can you see in the scriptures the glimpses that were just read today? The first glimpse was a transforming glimpse. It was from the second Kings, and it was a story of Elijah and Elisha. Elijah was the great first of the great prophets, the great and voices of God. And people saw the glory of God in Elijah. 
And when Elijah said, no, uh, just stay where you're at. I've got further to go. Elijah says, I'm not leaving you. That was the first, that was a genuine voice of, of faith and love. I am never going to leave you. Elijah said, well, I am going to have to leave you. But come on with me as far as you can. Right before he's to leave, he says, let me give you something as a gift for your faithfulness, for your, for your life in the future. What, what can I do for you? And Elijah says, all I would like is to be able to do what you have done and do more of it for people. I'd, I'd like a double portion of your spirit. And what does Elijah put as a condition for receiving the gift? If you do what? If you see me when I go to, to heaven. If you glimpse my, my leaving. All it takes is just a glimpse. A touch of the Master's hand to transform us from ordinary to extraordinary. In that one glimpse, Elisha became not just the novel, novice and the apprentice of the great prophets. He became the second great prophet who was to do even more to show the world the power of God. And it all started because he was there to see Elijah, Elijah's party. If he had stayed in Bethel and not gone, he wouldn't have seen it. If he had not followed Elijah as far as he could, he would not have experience the transformation. I mean, you see the lesson for us? We All we can do is follow God and do the best we can. And when God says, you look tired, why don't you just rest a little bit? Because there's other things that need to be done. And we say, no, as surely as I have breath, I'm going to keep walking with you, Lord. I'm not going to stop. I might not be the best at this. I might, I might stumble and fall, but I am not going to stop. And because we keep following and walking with God, we're there to glimpse, to glimpse the glory of God and to experience a transformation. Our ordinary lives are transformed into something extraordinary. You've experienced this in earthly relationships. You, you meet someone and like the the you know the theologian said, ba -bing, ba -boom, you know, it just something happened. You know, it just took a glimpse for me to see that young lady with the blonde hair and the pretty blue eyes, and I was hooked. Her name's Ann, and she's she's put up with me for 35 years. Just a glimpse and my life transformed. When I, when I saw the compassion of doctors and nurses in the hospital, or people in, uh, in crisis time, when I see the courage and the valor of our military, uh, men and women, and, and our, all the firemen, all the people that go in harm's way, when everybody's running away, they're running towards the danger. It's their calling. I see glimpses of the power and the love of God in this life. And then I see, I ask myself, how can you do that? Because it's a gift. It's, a, it's God working through us. In the gospel lesson, we, we have what's called the transfiguration of Christ. It's, it's one of the, the greatest pictures, uh, stories uh, described of Jesus' life. It was the end of all of the, it was the greatest of all the epiphanies that were revealing of the glory and the divine nature of God in Christ Jesus. He starts out as a baby. He's a, he's a teenager driving his parents crazy by, by not staying with the, with the caravan and staying at the temple and, and making it all uh, wonder. Grows up to a young man who is turning the world upside down. And every way along, they see glimpses of divine at his baptism, at the wedding of Cana, at all of these different points when he takes bread and fish and feeds thousands of people. They see glimpses of the divine, but not 
anything like what happened in this story. Goes up on the mountain and he is changed in, uh, in witnessed by Peter. And some of the disciples, they see his glory. But it's just a glimpse. It's just a moment in time. But their lives are then challenged. Challenged to, to share this witness uh, with others. To really to live a life worthy of this gospel, of this transfiguration. So that glimpse changes their lives and it challenges us. I go back to that young lady with the blonde hair and blue eyes. My life was changed, but my life was challenged. My life was challenged to how to share who I am with who she is. How to mold and mingle love that we've been taught and experienced. That we can share with children of our own. With, with friends and family. Just how to do this. Every day has been a challenge for me. Because I don't want to mess up this relationship. I don't want to miss an opportunity to share love and grace with one of the children, even if they're bouncing off the wall. Mine did the same thing. Did I tell you the story of what one, one well-meaning uh, church member uh, did to me on purpose when my kids were little? Gave our middle son, Nathan, who who would do anything for money. I mean, he would, he was not a bad kid, but he knew the value of money. He's about six years old, and and one of the ladies kept bribing him with a quarter. Says, if you'll interrupt your father's prayer and say amen right in the middle of it, I'll give you a quarter. <laughs> amen. Yeah. And I asked her over and over again, I said, why do you do this? She says, it's the most fun I have most days. I look forward to Sunday to sit just, just for that. Now, I tell you that because when I make a comment about children or whatever, I've already been there. I want them here, whether they're being bribed or whatever, because they want to hear. They're going to hear the word of God. They're going to glimpse what love and joy and fun and family is all about. And hopefully, God willing, they're never going to be. They're not going to hear sarcasm and anger and bitterness in this place. They're going to know that this is a sanctuary. This is a place of holiness where God transforms us with each glimpse of his glory. I told you about transforming glimpses and challenging glimpses, but... Paul's letter to the Corinthians talks about an illuminating glimpse. Something that, that we see that actually makes our life brighter. Paul said, let the light shine out of darkness. You have seen the light of the glory of God so that you might have the knowledge of God. You might be able to share the knowledge. Your life will be Illuminated from inside out, there's no doubt. We're shining for the Lord. It's powerful stuff, these glimpses of God. Let me remind you of your homework, because I try for us to uh, say our goodbyes and parting is such sweet song. Y'all are still warm. There's going to be opportunities this week to offer a witness. A witness that sometime in our worship this day, sometime in our gathering, you have glimpsed a little of the joy, a little of the love, a little of the hope of God. Either through the scriptures, through the, the crazy preaching of your pastor, or whatever. You've seen it. You know it. And what's the value of these glimpses, ultimately? We need them in the tough times. And others around us need them, need us to share them. 
Because there are going to be opportunities. There are going to be challenges this week when you want to give up or somebody around you wants to give up or somebody needs to just know that you believe that you have seen some part of God at work. So as the old time preacher says, can I have a witness? People need a witness. And you're going to be that witness. Or somebody here is going to be a witness to you. But that's your homework. What you have seen, declare, so that others might come to see the glory of God.